Joining me today to demystify some common myths and misconceptions about our oral health, please welcome dentist and periodontist Dr. Yair Lenga. Hello, good to be here. Because yeah. this is huge, and um, a lot of people think different things than what reality is. So yes. that's what we're going to go through some myths. And the first myth is that gum disease is localized. Right. That is a myth. That is a myth. It's a myth I don't only hear from patients alone, but also from professionals within the medical community. Okay. And it's really important to understand that the oral cavity doesn't just stop at the teeth, it actually can affect the entire body. Okay. So periodontics is a specialized de discipline within dentistry, really focusing on disease of the teeth and their supporting structures. Okay. Those are the gums, yeah. the bone, and the ligament that supports the teeth. Okay. So as time goes on, if harm happens to those supporting structures, it can lead to premature tooth loss. Nobody wants to lose their teeth. Nope. But now we also have a portal of entry where the disease in the mouth can now affect the rest of the body. And is that why and is that why we're always hearing that this, what's happening in your mouth, is actually indicative of your overall health? Absolutely. So if you've got disease there, it can like what can happen in your body? How can it travel? There are a ton of different examples from heart disease to diabetes. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the examples I want to share with you is something called atherosclerosis. Do you are you I'm familiar? so happy you said that and not me. <laughs> atherosclerosis. What is that? So that's a form of heart disease okay. where plaques form within the blood vessels that supply blood to the heart and the yeah. heart muscle. Okay. So over time, as you develop these plaques, they narrow the blood supply mm -hmm. and restrict the amount of oxygenated blood to the muscle. So hold on, that plaque starts in your teeth? So what we're finding now is if you look very carefully at the plaques inside the heart, yeah. they are the same types of plaque that form around the teeth. Huh. They have the same bacteria, they yeah. have the same bacterial byproducts, mm -hmm. and then the same biofilm. And when we're treating periodontal disease early, yeah. that actually shows reduced amounts of atherosclerosis, smaller plaques, and less frequent narrowing of the blood vessels in the heart. That's amazing. It's incredible. Because I always had heard about that, that relationship, but I just did not understand how they were connected. So that's very interesting. Okay, here's another myth. Uh, gum disease only uh, affects older people. So this is a myth, this is a myth. And you guys know it's a myth. They're like, no. <laughs> That's a, thank you so much for bringing that up because a lot of the patients I see actually tend to be older patients. Yeah. And the reason why is that at that point when they're starting to notice the problems or the consequences of gum disease, mm -hmm. that's when it's symptomatic. They start to notice that their teeth are loose, mm -hmm. that teeth are crowding when they never were crowded before, mm -hmm. bad taste in the mouth or bad breath, something called halitosis, yeah. uh, and also bleeding gums, swollen gums, tender to hot and cold, and to even light touch. Yes. But the, the point of that is it doesn't affect the older individual, it's just that they're noticing the effects at an older age because it had time to develop. It's been happening forever. It's been happening forever. Kind yeah. of like the development of the Grand Canyon. Yes. So that happened over hundreds of thousands of years, yes. millions of years. Erosion from flash floods and from the Colorado River yeah. slowly carved out all of that rock. Okay. Same thing in the mouth. As the inflammation progresses, as disease process progresses, mm -hmm. it erodes the bone slowly and once it's gotten to the point that it's symptomatic, yeah. now it's too far gone and may not even be reversible. Okay, so you have to start looking at that gum disease from a very young age and preventing it from a very young age. You do not Sorry. want the Grand Canyon in your mouth. You do not want the Grand Canyon. Right? Exactly. Nobody wants that. No. Um, let's talk about another, uh, another myth that dental x-rays are dangerous. You know why we think they're dangerous? because they put that big heavy thing on us and then That's they right. run away. You exactly. run away. Behind a wall. You go behind a wall. Why are you behind a wall and I'm still here so, with the x-ray? I know, believe it or not, in Europe, they yeah. don't use dental uh, aprons. Okay. And the clinician actually stays in the room during the x-ray. So in my office, because of Ontario laws, we obviously follow all the precautions and patients do wear the uh, lead apron, yeah. but I'm quite comfortable standing in the room. Okay. Technology in dentistry has advanced so much yeah. that that beam of radiation is not scattering all over the room. If that's happening, we're doing something wrong. Okay. It is so localized and it is so pinpoint that it is not hitting anywhere else. Yeah. But more importantly, today we use digital radiography. 
Okay. And that is such a huge advancement in dentistry, yeah. where it takes one tenth to one twentieth the amount of radiation to create a high definition, diagnosable x ray yeah. compared to traditional film x rays. Okay, very good. Okay, so we're safe. It's the equivalent of uh, the radiation from eating a banana yeah. or from walking from your front door yeah. to your car door that's parked on your driveway. Okay, good to know. Before, I don't want to get into another myth, but I do want to give a quick nod to gum health. Yes. Because we said that you have to watch it and you have to watch for gum disease. What should we be doing? You brought a bunch of tools for us. What do we need to be doing to keep our teeth so clean? One of the, the most good? important things about uh, periodontal health yeah. is actually understanding that it's not a solo event. Mm -hmm. Not one person is involved in it. It's a collaborative effort between the professional team, your dentist, your hygienist, your periodontist, yes. and what you do at home to maintain those things. Okay. So these, I believe, were designed by NASA engineers. Oh, well, excuse me. One of the most impressive ones, I think, is the water flosser. Yeah. And this is a battery-operated high-pressure device yeah. that actually acts like a water spray uh -huh. and gets water in between the teeth. Okay. Now what's amazing about this device is it has a built-in water tank, mm -hmm. so patients can actually choose what they put into the tank. So if you have sensitive teeth to hot and cold, mm -hmm. warm up the water, put it in here, oh, and now I see. that reduces the barrier for yes. patients who say, my teeth are too sensitive. Right, see I was thinking vodka, but that would be wrong. <laughs> would be wrong. Well, vodka kills bacteria, so not a bad idea. Just a thought. Yeah, thank you so much. Thank that you so was much. great.